if you have a short term perspective of just like, I just need money now, I just need to plug up the holes in the boat, I just need to fix the problems that are right in front of me, you're gonna make bad decisions, such as a client, you know, reaches out to you, and he's talking bad to your team members, and he's a terrible client. And you're like, damn, I just I really need, you know, money, I need cash flow for this month. So I'm gonna keep him on board, bad decision, right? Low quality decisions gonna affect you in the long run. But if you have a long term perspective, because you have the right mindset around your business and around your whole career, etc. Like, that's an easy decision to just like let go of that client, because it doesn't serve into the type of team you want, the type of client base you want, the type of uh, business you want, etc. So small example on that, but I recommend you guys check out the uh, the mindset module, which again, I'm thinking about updating and redoing soon, but it's important. It's uh, the most important. Yeah, in my specific case, I feel that module can be life-changing for a lot of people. Like I, I've, I've gone through this iteration multiple times already in the past 12 years. To me, it feels almost like, and I never will, I'm not going to be able to do that ever, but it's like giving birth, right? We, we have a friend that is going to give birth and my wife was telling me that she was in a meeting with her another women right talking about it and she was saying oh i feel that i'm ready and my wife is like you're not ready you don't know what you're getting <laughs> you're never into, ready. Yeah. no you don't know until you're in it it's kind of like you you can prepare yourself but when you're in it it's just like oh this is how it actually feels and that's why it's good to be prepared for it is pretty much what you're saying right you gotta strengthen your mind and have a certain amount of mental fortitude right and it's not woo woo stuff it is like the most important stuff it's not like we i didn't just put that module in there because i thought it'd be cool like oh let, let me make this whole program kind of well-rounded by putting a mindset module in there no it's like the most important thing i know a lot of people that i could name by name in our community where it's like dude if i just fixed your mindset every other problem in your business would solve itself it's that critical you know i owe everything in my career all my success etc et anything i have to like developing that mindset to learn how to get your subconscious mind in tune with your conscious mind your conscious mind knows your goals and where you're trying to get to and what you want to achieve and if we go through a certain problem process to make sure our subconscious is aware of that as well such as something as simple as like writing down and reading your goals every day right if we're able to do that our conscious mind making our subconscious mind of what we're trying to accomplish your subconscious mind will always be on the lookout for opportunities to make that happen that's when you start to hear people talk about like oh opportunities are just all around me i wake up every day and like all i see is opportunity it feels like the universe is just bringing stuff to me it's because your subconscious mind is in tune with what you're trying to accomplish so your subconscious mind is like day after day 24 7 scanning the horizon and looking for opportunities, right? It's kind of like how if you say, you know, I'm really in the market for a new, you know, car or whatever, and you think that to yourself just randomly, like, man, I really want that kind of car, I like that car. It seems like you start seeing that car everywhere, right? Same thing happens with like, you, there's this certain word you don't hear for years and it seems like all of a sudden you hear it three times in one day that's called synchronicity once our conscious mind makes our subconscious mind aware that like we notice something or we're on the lookout for something it will be subconsciously looking for more instances of that thing that makes sense guys so it's like we write down our goals we focus on like what our goals are we make sure by reading it every day our subconscious mind knows what we're trying to accomplish we are 10 times more likely to notice on a day-to-day -day basis opportunities and new potential strategies for the achievement of those goals. Something that it's been important for me as well uh, is just to actually commit, which sounds very simple, right? But yeah. I, I've never really 100% committed because I knew what I was getting into. So I've always had like a side something to focus on, which diverted my attention always. And, you know, I've, I've always made it like I've made money, good money before I came into the program. But this year I was like, okay, fuck it. I'm going to go through the pain this year. This year I'm going through the pain and it goes all the way to, I'm literally falling asleep writing 80K per month, 40K in profit, 80K per month. <laughs> but that's how I'm falling asleep now with a, with a note pack, writing yep. those goals and just falling asleep with that. Yeah, and it gets even more powerful if you start yeah. writing, like you just said, about the why behind the why and what that 80K per month is gonna do. So the goal is to realize like our agency is a pump and how can we strengthen that pump of over time mindset wise keeping our goal on like the bucket <laughs> level of things you know what i mean so i'm here i'm in the trenches as you i'm doing what you do i'm in the trenches of agency collective like we're all building our businesses together we're building this pump and on the back end we have these big overarching goals of filling those buckets and of course providing for our families providing a 
better life for our children. It's a goal that I have, like all those things, right? Here's the thing about niches. Which niche is the best? The one that you stick with. <laughs> I get that question so much. Which niche should I go after? And it's like, well, yeah, we have kind of guardrails, the four niche prerequisites. It's in the intro module now. It says niche selection tips, but like high ticket niche, they already see your service as a necessity, ease of marketing for them and ease of marketing to them. So we have guardrails of like, hey, this is probably what's going to make a good niche. But when it comes down to like you selecting a niche and you, you trying that niche out, AKA starting to market to them or starting to sell to them. And after like two, two, three, four weeks, you're not landing clients, you're not a millionaire yet or whatever. Like the people who give up and just hop to the next niche are going to be niche hopping for years. The people who really succeed are the ones who choose a niche that follows those four prerequisites. We got to use common sense and make sure it's like, it's not like underwater basket weaving or dog food. Like it has to be a decent industry and niche, right? But after picking that, you hunker down and you say, I'm going to learn how to be the best freaking guy at advertising to metal roofing companies or whatever it is, right? You're like, I'm going to master this craft. I'm going to know this Tam really, really well. And Chris, I love the fact that you've like been talking to people in that Tam and stuff like having those conversations. I'm going to get to know this Tam like so, so well. I'm going to write a bunch of copy and messaging. I'm going to utilize the resources I have, like dudes like Blake who will review my ad copy and look at my ads and stuff. I'm going to get really good at marketing to this crowd. And it may not strike gold in the first two weeks, but I'm going to stick with it, you know? So again, the best niche is the one that you stick with. I, I feel like I've been giving that advice a lot lately because it's true. I see people going into very proven niches, you know, HVAC or whatever. And after a few weeks, they're like, I ah, just don't know if this niche is working. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like HVAC companies need SEO and Google ads badly. It's just that you didn't make it work. You didn't stick with it, right? How do you know when it's time to bail on a niche and, and try something different? Like, I think the reality of what happened is he split tested a couple different niches in his advertising in that first month or so. Craig, do you remember Jacob, you and him and me started working together over a year ago. You were probably in that same era, but I think he essentially like used our ad copy frameworks and our ad frameworks and then like launched a campaign that had creatives for like multiple different contracting industries like that. Yeah, like I asked him personally, like what he did. And he yep. said uh -huh. that, that that's what he did is he split test like two or three different, maybe three or four, whatever it was, you know, uh, industries and just kind of went with it until like what Blake's saying is he kind of had it going. He's like, yeah, I'm going to stick with this one. Yeah, it's not like he devoted a lot of time before he found the niche he not landed on. So like, right. Think about it, guys. You can like to get tactical for a second, you can have a Facebook page that has to do with like an overarching industry and you can run like three different ads. One where the copy is targeted towards pest control companies. One where the copy is targeted towards roofers and another one for remodelers. And you can start to run those and see which one starts performing the best. You can take calls in those three different industries and see just like which type of clientele you like the most. And we're talking about the difference of like duplicating an ad and changing out the the name of the TAM, you know? Like that's how easy it is to, to split test stuff, you know? Obviously once we like really start drilling into a TAM, you wanna get to know them really well, do your TAM document, do the research and everything. But like, that's pretty much what Jacob did, I believe. Most of us have spent years getting good at a craft, a skill like SEO or Google ads for our clients. But let me remind y'all of a really hard truth. Getting good at SEO and Google ads makes you a great candidate to be an employee at an agency, not to be the owner of an agency. The skill set that will make you a great owner of an agency is client acquisition, right? So like, yes, it's awesome to be great at generating results for your, your clients. But over time, you want to bring in contractors or employees to do that part. And you need to get, get good at generating clients and leads and results for marketing agencies, your agency. Whenever you start to treat yourself like the number one VIP employee, I mean, excuse me, um, client, you'll, st you'll start to grow very, very fast. All of us need to ask ourselves, again, more like difficult questions right here. If I was my own client, would I be happy with the amount of leads and opportunity I have on a day-to-day -day basis or would I fire myself immediately? The minute I started selling a framework and making it second grade reading level crystal clear, the easier it got to sell. In the sales module down at the bottom, there's a tab that says like, call reviews or call recordings or whatever. And that first call recording in there is a 45 minute call of me selling SEO and Google ads to a remodeler named Alberto. This guy for sure knows nothing about SEO and anything technical. Y'all should go watch that call and see how I communicated those services to him because it was very simple. Like I probably didn't get into any technical aspects of it at all. But by the end, he was like, okay, yeah, I see like, yeah, this sounds good. Let's do it or whatever. So at what point can I start outsourcing the sales or is that something that, that I can do? Like I, I kind of feel like I want to hire 
someone to help me with sales, but I, I want to hire someone like good, right? I, you know, it's not something that you can really outsource to the Philippines or something like that, right? Like, um, I don't know how, what would your recommendations be for that? My honest thoughts on it are that that's something you get off your plate when you're at like 25, 30, 35 K per month or something. Okay. Yeah, I'm not because quite sure. no one's going to sell better than the owner. No one's going to have more knowledge of the product and be as bought in. No, no one's going to have a higher conversion rate than you for the, for the time being. Also, as you go into, if you're going to into a new TAM or a new offer or a new way of selling or whatever, you need to have closed a dozen, two dozen plus deals before you can adequately manage someone who you're expecting to do that process. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of power in that. Um, to be transparent, like I think I sold the first 400K of Agency Collective before I ever brought anyone on to help me with recruiting. And like it, that's what it takes sometimes, you know, it takes mm -hmm. really, yeah. Enough said. I, I recommend you be the closer for your business until you get to a certain level. And there's multiple reasons for, for that. No one's going to sell better than you. Um, you should, if you're structuring things correctly, you should have all the time you need to do that. And then also you need to be in a position to be able to train someone whenever you do bring someone on. However, one thing I will say is an, an appointment setter, an SDR could be a great role for you to bring on relatively soon. Someone who can field all your leads, call them, triage them. So do intro calls for you and then set demo calls for you. So that way you as the owner can just be doing the closing calls, just the demo calls. I think that's a really good idea. Uh, Josh Stockel, who runs our Friday workshops, uh, pretty sure that's what he does. And uh, he has a lot of success with that. So I think that's a good idea, especially if you're really getting the hang of generating opportunity and generating leads that can put you in a position to where you can have someone fielding that opportunity, sorting that opportunity, triaging that opportunity. And you're only getting on calls where you, you can close them on the call.